Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is, uh, what a day it is. It is not a day that shall live in infamy, but it's a day that will live in clownishness. So it starts with Manafort. No one knows who he is. He worked for Trump for three minutes. And he's indicted for things that have nothing to do with the Trump. We don't know whether he did them or not. We know they broke his door down. They used Gestapo tactics on him, which the left applauded, incidentally. And that was before Weinstein. That was before Halperin. That was before Spacey. But very soon, the left will come to understand that a fascistic government, no matter who is behind it, is not good for anyone. And then later in the day, another bombshell. Podesta resigns from his lobbying firm. Now you say, well, who is Manafort? Who is Podesta? That's exactly the point. The average person out there does not know who Paul Manafort is. They don't know who Tony Podesta is. This is all in-house gossip. Is uh, damn Repub, Repub, Dem. They get the guy. They did Clinton. We They indicted Clinton. They impeached him. Nothing happened. So now we're going to get one of theirs. This is the way politics have devolved in America. I feel as though I'm watching the Ukrainian parliament itself. You know, one of the things I used to like about television when they showed uh, international news was the Ukrainian parliament when they beat each other up in Ukraine while wearing suits and ties. At least there was entertainment value. Why is there no such sport here in America? Why are they so polite to each other when they're stabbing each other in the back, I wonder? No one knows who Manafort is. No one knows he worked for Trump, uh, campaign manager, for three months. No one even knows who Podesta is, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman. And I ask today on Twitter, will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence and against whom? No kidding. They used fascist techniques, broke his door down, woke him up in the morning, seized his records. They indicted him as I said they would. We all knew that was coming. Now what? The next in the middle of the day, Tony Podesta, founder of the Podesta Group, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman Johnny, resigning from his lobbying company. Why? Because Tony Podesta and his lobbying firm were subjects of a federal investigation by the same special counsel, Robert Mueller. Okay? And... The Podesta Group was one of several firms that worked in a campaign called the European Center for Modern Ukraine. The campaign was led by Paul Manafort and prompted Ukraine's image in the West. That's not a bad thing, is it? So in other words, both Podesta and Manafort worked for Ukraine. Isn't that interesting? Now, you do know that Obama meddled in foreign elections. He meddled in the Israel election. That's a well-known fact with some vermin from New York City running opposition against Netanyahu. Obama meddled in the elections of at least three nations, and we hear nothing about it. But I, I'm telling you right now, I have a very good instinct for what the people out there feel, what they want to think about. They don't care about any of this. Do you think they really care about Mueller? Do you think they care about this guy who is like a Dracula right now? Mueller's Halloween, says the Drudge Report. He looks like a Dracula. I know he's a, he's a revered American legislator. He ran the FBI. He's clean as an Eagle Scout. Bright. Great soldier. Yes, he was all of that. But once they become political, all of their good deeds of the past seem to dissolve. So I don't know that I can talk about that. I'll tell you what I really want to talk about on the Savage Nation. By the way, welcome to the show. Play the music again, because I do like that music. It's a- That's all. It's Monday. Lighten up. Because I'm so clement. Doesn't mean you have to. Meanwhile, here on the West Coast, we have an ongoing crime wave in San Francisco and the Enverones being swept under the uh, rug by the idiots who run the media who will never show the perps. It's now become that a gang of youths, you know what that's an acronym for, a gang of youths held up families at a Great America amusement park And there was no description of the gangs by the vermin who run the San Francisco newspaper. 
I'm suspecting that the gang of youths were all Jewish and Christian youths on a Christian outing, and they held up normal families uh, with their children. That's the only guess I could make as to why they're covering it up, because they want to make certain that Jews and Christians are protected here in San Francisco. One man or a few men stood up to the gang youths as their wallets and phones were being stolen in front of their children, uh, and he was punched in the face. Now, where were they? This is a side note. Where was the security at California's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara while these gangs were assaulting families? Answer, they were working with the gangs of youths. Why, that's the same reason Best Buy went out of business in Sausalito. That's who they hired for security. The gangs that were holding up, that's my guess. Can't prove it. Should I play the music for the third time? Here's the real question that I want to talk about, which is this. Why are gigantic liberal supporters being destroyed all of a sudden? Who is behind it and why? You see, now that's a question you haven't asked yourself. We know Harvey Weinstein, one of the biggest left-wing big mouths in the history of the world. Now Halperin, who was one of the biggest of the biggest big mouths on the intellectual level, not on the film level, also brought down with accusations about he touched me, did this, he looked at me, touched me. He allegedly touched me, moved against me by the stove, and he was down. Now Kevin Spacey goes down. These are three gigantic liberals. So I asked myself, wait a minute, there is a pattern here. I'm trained to observe patterns as a trained scientist. What we learn is to, tra- is, to, is to try to study patterns. You understand that? There are patterns in bird migration. There are patterns in disease. There are patterns in epidemics. There are patterns in indictments. So I ask myself, why are these liberal men being destroyed? Uh, well, I know O'Reilly was the first. or one of, No, no, it was the other guy. God rest his soul, never met him. But I think he blocked me at Fox News for a quarter of a century. Whatever his name was. I don't remember the guy, the bald old guy. I don't know, whatever his name was. Who remembers? No, do I care. He's gone. He went. Uh, O'Reilly went on the alleged touching job. But then all of a sudden, it's big libs are going. Weinstein, Halperin, Spacey. And the odd part about Spacey is the gay community is going freakazola over it. All of the giant gays in the San Francisco area are freaking saying, how dare he say he's gay and come out as gay at the time he was uh, accused of doing something inappropriate with a 14-year-old boy. So they don't like the fact that he came out as gay around kind of right after he was busted for making a sex pass on a boy when he was 14. Actor Kevin Spacey made sex pass when I was 14, says some actor who is now about 103. The actor's 103, what happened when... It doesn't matter. He was a 14-year-old kid. That's, that's bad. That's terrible. That's as bad as it gets. Again, I'm a sexual libertarian myself. I've said that to you. I'll say it again until you hear me. The only thing I've ever said to you is leave the children alone. If you touch the children, you cross the line. That's the end of the road. Okay, so Spacey allegedly did this when the kid was 14. Don't call me on this. And now others are coming. Look, can I tell you something? It's well known in Hollywood that he had a certain like, a certain liking for certain things. Let's put it to you that way. It was no secret in Hollywood that Kevin Spacey was a little bit of a space cadet when it came to certain kind of proclivities. So this is not a shock to anyone in the 90210 uh, area code, if that's the area code. I actually don't know it in Beverly Hills, but I think it's something like that. It kind of works. The 90210ers all knew that this was sort of what was. So it's not a shock, that's all. But the thing is this. I'm asking a big question, folks. Why do you think big libs like Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey are going down all of a sudden? I have, I have a theory. I have a theory on this. I really do. As to why all of a sudden big libs are going. Play the opening again. 855-4728. I think I'll play it all in. this Monday, I'd like to ask you, what kind of personality do you happen to have? Are you a moody person? Are you quiet? Are you happy to be alone? Do you spend much of your time thinking of yourself? Well, then you're probably an introvert. Folks, if you're the other type, are you a good mixer? Do you prefer the company of others to solitude? Uh, Then you're probably an extrovert. Or, see, I could give you an ambivert if you want to know what you are. Do you know what an ambivert is? Do you feel that you have some of the qualities 
that I just listed and combined with some of those listed in two, meaning you're both intro and extro. That's sort of AC and DC, but it's not to do with sexuality. See, in common with most people, few of whom are pure introverts or extroverts, some of you are probably perverts, I mean ambiverts. And so that's why we're talking about all the verts today. And the phone number here is 85. I'm having a good time. Listen, I'll tell you something. When I started the radio, there was a phrase, have, a, have fun on the radio. That's what we used to say to each other. That's what program directors would say to hosts in the early days of radio in the 90s. Have fun on the radio. All of a sudden, every radio host became a combination of John Wayne and John Adams. I don't know how that happened. Now, I myself am a combination of Albert Einstein, Albert Schweitzer, and Frankenstein. I admit that. But the fact of the matter is, if I don't have fun on the radio, you're not having fun listening. And so, therefore, I intend to have a great deal of fun on the radio. And the way I'm going to do that is ask you to call me at 855-407-282. And I have <clears throat> one of the most fun things in months. It gave me such relief just before the show. I went on the New York Post. They have a video of a Democrat lawmaker from upstate New York uh, who broke down when a state trooper or a local cop pulled her over for speeding. You will not believe her as she screams, I have PSD! I have PTSD! What are you doing to me? You can't believe this. Why did you single me out? I have PTSD. I'm an important legislator. I'm on the way to work. Who are you? What kind of cop are you? I'm going to fight this. This is a liberal woman, especially in politics, to the, to the nth degree. I told you I see patterns. When you hear this tape, we have enough time, or have I finished the opening yet? I'm ready to plots here. I'm dying up here. Listen, no, I don't want to play it yet. Let them get ready for this. Who is Manafort? No one knows. Who is Podesta? No one knows. This is only an in-crowd thing, I'm trying to tell you. If you turn on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, you would think that the average person in the street driving around thinks it knows who Manafort is, knows who Podesta is. It's lucky if they even know who any of the players are. They don't know who they are. Most of them don't care who they are either. They figure it's politics as usual in America, which has become disgusting. One is lower than the other. I know, uranium one, I don't even want to talk about it. I've heard it ad infinitum. You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to do about uranium one? What do I care that the Clintons look like traitors who sold out our uranium stores to Russia? What do you want me to do about that? Let the government do something about it. Let the newspapers do something about it. What do you want from me? Actor Kevin Spacey made sex pass when I was 14. I'm not into that. That's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, I, I don't think that's a big deal at all. What is the biggest news of the day? Gangs of youths hold up families at Great America. No description of gangs. A hundred people, mostly teens. Again, no description of the teens. I suspect that they were all young priests and rabbis on an outing holding people up. And then they uh, beat people up, stole their wallets and phones. You know, rabbis and priests do that because that's what you have to assume since they're covering up any description of the teens. Got punched in the face, one visitor wrote. Park officials did not immediately return phone calls Monday. You realize there's a crime spree in the San Francisco area. Did you know that? Did you know liberalism is the most crime-inducing political philosophy on the planet? Did you know that you cannot walk in San Francisco without stepping on human feces? It is dried, of course. Uh, don't get me wrong. But there's human feces all over the downtown financial district. And, of course, there's plague now spreading. There's hepatitis spreading. But don't tell the city fathers and mothers they're too busy robbing the treasury. At least that's what I think. Now, of course, I'm only a talk show host that doesn't exist. The phone number here is 855-407-282. If you care to join the host who doesn't exist, that's the number. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Dedicated to uh, Kevin Spacey, Harvey Weinstein. Come on, Halperin, you can you can do it. Come on. 
Okay, welcome back. What great music this is. It's from a series. Uh, I heard it first on a, uh, I think it's an HBO, a Showtime series called The Deuce. At first, I hated the series. I hated it. I couldn't stand the main actor. I, th- I couldn't take a sneer. As it goes on, it gets better. It shows the birth of the pornography industry and, of course, the degeneration of New York City during, I, I don't know what years those were, the 70s, pimps, prostitutes, the mafia, when they first put in those uh, self-gratification machines that they put quarters in. It's a piece of American cultural history. This was all pre-internet pornography. Now, of course, it's clean as a whistle owned by major corporations. A lot of the tax money going to saving the elephants and the seals. I understand that. Uh, Museums and whatnot, museum trust boards, interlocking corporate directorships and all that. But in the early days, the rough and tumble days of New York when it was a cesspool, it became an interesting uh, phenomenon to watch. And some of the stock footage is interesting. The music's great. The acting's good. And, of course, that whole phenomenon is good. That's I'd rather talk about that than the Uranium One, Uranium Two. I don't know what you're getting so excited, everyone, about Hillary allegedly, the Clintons allegedly, selling off America's uranium stores to Russia. Why does that bother you? Did you ever think that there was a, an altruistic component to the Clintons in making that deal of the uranium, allegedly making that deal, that they were just trying to balance the power in the world to reduce world tensions? So they made a few million on the side for doing it. But, you know, all good work is worthy of a few million dollars here and there. So they were trying to balance the power between the U.S. and Russia by letting the Russians buy most of our uranium stores. And so, therefore, they could make atomic weapons and we couldn't. It it was a good thing in many ways from their point of view because it reduced the militarism of the evil white men who run America. Now, it is true that there are evil white men who run Russia, but they're not as evil because they're communists at the time. And as you know, communistic evil white men are not as evil as capitalistic evil white men. So the Clintons really not may not be as predatory as you think. You're not looking at it in the right way. All right. Look, I'm going to keep doing this. I may just wind up talking about the engine rebuild on my Jaguar XKE as much as talk about this. Sex revolution. Realistic dolls will change human interaction forever. That scared me. That would really, really scare anybody to look at that. Realistic dolls? The Stepford Wives come to you in plastic now? Well, I don't know. It would reduce the Weinsteins, the Halperins, and the Spaceys in a way, when you think about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287-SAVAGE. San Francisco, this is the Savage Nation, and I'm not William Friedkin. I don't even know him, but I love the sound to that music, uh, to that, that soundtrack to that movie. It seems to be my life today, pounding, 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 pounding. Who's banging the hammer in there? Who am I imitating when I do that? Who's hitting a hammer? Everyone knows who that is by now. He's a wonderful, wonderful socialist talk show host on... Uh, More snotty nonsense by chicks who uh, put down General Kelly for being low-class Irish while he was high-class Irish from the same city. And, of course, that's why uh, Pill Griffin keeps him on on MSNBC because they hate hate the poor. They have a contempt for anybody who lives west of the Hudson or east of Eden. Will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence? That's the object. How can we speculate? on what he's going to do. He worked three months for him. Now they indicted him on nothing to do with the campaign. This is what happens in a Stalinist government. You think that this is kosher? You're wrong. And I don't really care how fair-minded people are saying, um, whatever his name is, the DA. I don't remember his name. I'm supposed to know his name. Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. The tall guy. Uh, He's not being fair because once they open an indictment, they can go anywhere in it. They They were investigating the Russia collusion story, right? But they found nothing, so they got him on something else. All right, fine, but what does it have to do with Donald Trump? Nothing, but the vermin in the media already made a linkage. The linkage is already Trump's campaign manager indicted. Well, on what, though? This is how Wolf Blitzer uh, thrives. This is how they thrive on innuendo and smear. They're worse than you can imagine. 
See, I'm being nice today. I had some other words that I just checked and, and, and I checked. You know, I wonder at the end of days what a man like Wolf Blitzer thinks. I, or myself, for that matter. You don't know. I mean, I'm, look, my book is God, Faith, and Reason. you you got to understand this is on my mind. And every day I think of the crypt or the box. And I try to, like, get it out of my head. But, I mean, you really ask yourself, is there a hereafter? Uh, do you meet God? Does he judge you? Or is it all a joke to constrain the stupid people while the people who are really smart get to do anything they want their whole lives and they die just like you do and there's nothing? There's just an imaginary thing the whole life? Don't think people don't ask themselves these questions. But I don't want to go into God, faith, and reason. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I put something up over the weekend. Does God exist? Where is he? Why do bad things happen? People love that question. And I'm not going to talk about that. But... uh, I don't know. I don't think God cares about us much anymore. I think he created us, and he got so fed up with what man was doing on this planet to each other and to himself that he disappeared. He forgot this universe even exists. I know that's cynical, and you don't want to hear it. That's not what's in God, faith, and reason, but I think I've become more cynical since the book was written. What do you think? I'm going to sit here like a phony preacher? I'm not going to do that. (laughs) I'm one of those guys, you know, I know many of you out there don't believe, but I promise you, if you buy my book, you will find God Almighty in a teardrop on your wall. No, not me. Trust me, I know how to do it. I could have been a guru 30 years ago. I could be a big mega preacher today, but they're so phony it makes my my toes curl up inside my sandals. And I'm not I'm not a guy who rides on a mule. Let me put it to you this. I don't ride on a donkey. My toes curl up in my sandals when I hear those guys. I know many of you out there are dirty sinners just like I was. But when I fell, I found Jesus on the bottom of the sewer. That's what you want to hear. Mm. Oh, that jasmine tea is really good. John, WABC line four. What's on your mind, John? Yes, Doc Savage. I just wanted to say how you always warn us about history repeating itself. And lest we learn our lessons, and this sounds eerily similar with a couple in the 50s, I forget their name, who gave up the secrets of the atom bomb. Wait, wait, you're, wait you're talking about the Rosenbergs who, who traded on a United States development of the atomic bomb and sold it, gave it to, to uh, Russia because they were communists, uh, and they were executed for it in the early 1950s because they did the most horrible thing you could do to a nation. Are you saying the Clintons... Uranium scandal is equal to the Rosenbergs? Uh, Not yet, because we're still innocent until proven guilty. However, uh, uh, eerily similar is that it also touched off, I believe, the Cold War. And so not everybody has to be careful and hating communists and all this stuff that actually could have been avoided, you know. But uh, I guess it wasn't. It wasn't in the cards. But the Clintons... Well, let me tell you something. You're, you're touching on a nerve that, that really bothers me a lot, because I've said it before. When Hillary Clinton started to smear Putin, it was two to three years ago, she called him Hitler. I distinctly remember the speech. I said, every alarm bell went off in me. I said, she's covering something up. For her to call another world leader who's a major nuclear power Hitler, and all of a sudden the chorus of little people, all the way down to the Wolf Blitz of ventriloquists, started saying, Russia no good, Russia this, Russia tampered. There is a mass hysteria against Russia in this country started by Hillary Clinton's campaign in order to throw mud in the eye of those who are really looking at what her and her husband were doing. And the danger here is that it could lead to a war with Russia, which is the last thing we need right now. And I think that's what you're intimating. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it, it, it's just that... Uh, I get it. All right, I get it. I get it. It's too early already in the week for me to burn a, a fuse out over it. I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. That's all. That's all. We'll move on. It's in God's hands. You know, when I can't deal with something lately, maybe it's because I'm getting wiser as I get older. I just, I say, you know what? I I do the Italian shrug. Italian friends I knew were very big. Well, you you got them cornered on something, this, that, something was bothering you in the world. They go like, eh. They just shrug their shoulders. Eh. Bueno, bono, bueno, bueno, bono, bueno, bella, 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 bella. Everything was beautiful. Everything was more beautiful than something else. Try the vino as Bella. Try the Parmesan as Bono. What is the difference? What can I do? What am I going to do? Eat my heart out over it? If they did what we think they did with transferring through the Canadian front company 
the sale of the uranium mines to Russia, that is absolute treason. Now, what's going to happen? You know in this country, if you're poor and you pass a traffic light, you get a ticket. If you're poor and you steal a pencil from a supermarket, you can get arrested, probably beaten up with a nightstick somewhere in the back of the supermarket, first by a security guard, and then you're arrested for resisting arrest. If you are rich in America and you commit enough crimes, then you show the aptitude to become a politician, and then you start the long road up. And it depends upon how many crimes you have gotten away with to attract the attention of those at the top. Because if you get away with enough big crimes, they'll say this person has the aptitude to be a congressman. Now, if you get away with crimes that approach treason, you're right in the Senate. Then the big party bosses come to visit you, and the world opens up. First, you get a job on the news, in the news media. You're seen as a brilliant talking head. And people think that you're put there because you're so smart or good-looking, but you're actually put there by the, by the CIA. You know how many people are working for the CIA in the media right now? I wouldn't know, but I guarantee a lot of them are there because they have no ratings, and yet they're on CNN and MSNBC. Why are they there? Why are they there? Why do they give uh, some of them glasses, fake glasses, when they don't even have astigmatism to make them look intelligent, when they're just script readers like Jon Stewart? You tell me why. But the biggest question of the day, which ties into the secret hands behind it all, it's not that I believe in the, in the, the, uh, the black hand. I believe in the secret hands that control everything. I believe that when Plato wrote, the shadows on the wall are all we're seeing, Plato was right. He saw it in ancient uh, Greece. We don't actually see what's going on. We don't even see the puppets. All we see are the shadows of the puppets. So we don't really know. We're seeing triangulations of triangulations. But all of a sudden, when I see big men, big liberals like Weinstein, a Trump hater, a gun hater, a lib of the highest order going down for the count, and then all of a sudden this guy Halperin, he may not be a household word to you, but he was a big New York intellectual. He had it all. TV, uh, an HBO series, book deals. He had it all. All of a sudden, he went down. Now Kevin Spacey, another one went, I can't say he went down. Uh, another one fell. I got to watch my language here because some of the language applies too aptly, and I can be accused of accusing him of something. I can't say he went down. He, so a guy like Spacey, he fell. Next, he fell. Why are all these libs falling? Why? Why are they dropping? You see, this is the pattern that I see emerging. And, of course, this is a war on not just... Uh, liberal men, but it's a war on men in general. When have you seen a woman taken down for uh, any kind of allegations of this nature? Do you actually believe powerful women in Hollywood do not have sex with young actresses or actors who want parts? Are you joking? You think it's a one-way street? I don't. So we'll wait. Well, we'll see when that one happens. But that's not what I was getting at. I was getting at something else. I believe, and I know this is a real reach in the dark, that Guys like Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey, who are far left, all of them, burn somebody who knows the inside of all of us. And that includes you, me, and everyone else, someone who has all of our secrets. And for some reason, they had turned on this someone, that is Weinstein, Halpert, and Spacey, calling for his or her head, if you follow the uh, drift here. While I'm not so sure I ever called for the head of this person who I think has the dope on all of us who is at this time living in an embassy somewhere on earth and can't come home again. Because there is a book that was written many years ago called You Can't Go Home Again, and of course that book was a very prescient book in the sense that none of us can ever go home again. We can never, ever, ever achieve innocence after a certain age, which is why I get back to you, the listener, and the caller at 855-407-282. Am I talking in riddles? Is it too riddly? Ridley? Is this too Bo Diddley uh, and too many Ridleys? I don't know if I'm going to do Mueller anymore. I know you want him to go. He's not going. He's not stepping down. No, Trump is not going to uh, dismiss him. If he does, if he does Trump's um, going to be impeached. Trump can't do anything but let it play out. And what's going to happen here is they don't really want Paul Manafort. You know that. You mean, come on, let's be le obvious. This is the way they went after people in organized crime. This is the standard operating procedure. They get anyone they can on anything. Then they flip that person to get the next one up the chain. 
Then they flip that one, then the next one up the chain. That, 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 till they, they go for the peasant Avante, so to speak, look at the Bavalacci papers or whatever, and eventually try to bring down the whole. They don't achieve it. They never have achieved it. They've never gotten to the top. They never will get to the top. They never get to the bottom. All it does is just it satisfies the masses. We just want to see blood sport. All of us love this very much because it takes us out of our boring little lives. And also, we also must remember that I told you the average man has such a horrible life. The average person has such a horrible life, I should say today. I'm so sexist sometimes. I, I can't get used to it. I say the average man. There are women in the world. I came to understand that after many years of thinking about it. The average person in the world, shall I say the average humanoid in the world, leads such an ordinary life of desperation that when they see big people falling, it makes them feel good that they're not big. What they say is, aha, thank God I'm not well known. I'm safe. No one knows me. See what I'm saying? That's how that works. When I return, there will be a live read, another ad, then more ads, and another ad, then another ad, then two seconds of me talking, and then a break with more ads, and then when I come back, there'll be an opening and two minutes of talk, and then more ads, and then a break, and then more ads, and I'll be right back to give you more ads and more of me squeezed in between various things on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You've never heard of nitric oxide. Listen carefully. Nitric oxide is one of the most important molecules in your body. Promotes healthy circulation, which gets the oxygen and nutrients flowing throughout the body, helps support healthy blood pressure. And I've told you, you can help your body produce this nitric oxide naturally by drinking super beets. Only super beets is made from beets grown to exacting standards, and then they concentrate the nutrients in a way that makes them usable to the body to create nitric oxide very safely and very naturally. So if you want to increase your body's nitric oxide levels, call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working and free shipping. It's a great deal. Call 800-481-0504, 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com today. So we got the scandals now, the witch hunt going on, the Manafort. Look, I'm not going to give you the mixed chop meat that you're going to get from other shows on this. I know what you want to hear. I know all the keywords, all the buzzwords. Trump is innocent. He did nothing. Manafort has nothing to do with him. It's a fishing expedition. Mueller has to go. Uh, Hillary Clinton's Uranium One scandal is far worse. They should be indicted. I get that. That's mixed chop meat from mixed species sold from China and given to you on other talk shows. But I don't want to give you mixed chopped meat from various species that have been in transit for a couple of months now. I'd really rather give you filet mignon of the mind, but most of you don't even know how to digest that. So there's nothing I can do about it except do what I do, which is give you the steak and hope you enjoy it. And so when I come back, you'll have more steak from Michael Savage on any topic that you wish. Patrick on KSFO Line 8, what's on your mind, Patrick? Yeah, so uh, since I couldn't get God, faith, and reason until the 14th, I bought Trump's War. Uh, and I'm right on page 99. I couldn't put it down this weekend. I just want to thank you for making it easy reading for the Eddie. And uh, speaking of Plato, uh, I had no idea that celebrities have been cons for so long. So just wanted to... You, wait, 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 wait. You, you, didn't, you didn't know celebrities were what for so long? I didn't know celebrities had been cons for so long. I didn't know Plato had laid this out since the Roman times. Oh, 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 oh. he warned us about actors. Yeah, I mean, but what, you see, here's the problem in America. We love our actors, but we should understand they're only fakers. And we should never rely upon them for anything reliable because they don't know what they're talking about. They're good actors. And the more they can fake it, the better they are as an actor. But we don't rely upon them for political ideas. Oh, you're reading page 99 in Trump's Culture Wars in the book. I see what you're saying. Oh, we're seeing what Plato saw right here in America today. Take a look at the degenerates in the music business. You may like the tunes. I like the music, too. But I also think about the effect it has on people. That's why the left controls the arts. 
By controlling the arts, they control minds. Oh, I wrote that. Little did I know I was so ahead of my time. Well, my friend, thanks for reminding me what I wrote. I will then send you a copy of my new book, God, Faith, and Reason, out. Gee, it's two weeks now. There's good news out there. And the good news is that I'm still here. I'm still kicking. I'm not going anywhere. And I'll be back in the next hour. And we'll talk about all the topics of the day and try to avoid the chop meat. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Just another manic Monday. Oh, come on, give me the horn section. Oh, you're going to go from that to that. Good. I need some boost today. <laughs> Three inch platform heels, bell bottoms, Cadillac El Dorado, big hat, garbage strewn streets. Now that was New York when it was alive. Welcome to the Savage Nation. So clean now. All that's left of the thugs who beat up old people in the streets with a knockout game, swept under the rug by the media, the same media that's covering up. The gangs of youths that are beating people up at Great America Music Park on the West Coast, reserving all their hatred for white males like Beethoven. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. So, look, I know the Manafort story is all you want to talk about. I know what you want is you want the rancid mixed chop meat of talk radio made from various species. You know, when you buy hamburger today in a supermarket, it comes from different animals. I mean, maybe they're all cows. I can't even be sure of that. But it's not a single cow. It's mixed cows slaughtered in diff different countries. I wouldn't eat that kind of stuff. And that's what talk radio basically has become. So if you want rancid mixed chop meat, I've got a hammer for you. But if you'd like some filet mignon, stay tuned. Now let's take some calls. Jerry on WABC Line 1, what's on your mind, uh, Jerry? I happen to be Jewish, and I'm like you. I'm a conservative Jew. I was in... A half a dozen conservative synagogues, and I had nothing but headaches. They cursed me, they harassed me. I was <laughs> with me. Why am I conservative? I told them. Where wait, wait, let me. You you go there to pray, and they harassed you for not being a liberal. Oh, they did more than that. They called me the backside of a horse and a hole. They used the be. Well, why? All because you what? You backed Trump in a synagogue, and they they wanted to kill you. Well, that's even before then. Uh, so that goes back to Reagan and everything else. And now I belong to an Orthodox synagogue. I'm still the most conservative person, but to at least... Why, why is it that they assume the Jews are supposed to be liberals? Where did that come from? I don't know. I have four... Let, let me explain something. If God were alive, he'd be the most conservative entity on the planet. God is a super right-winger. Take a look at his Ten Commandments. They weren't written for Harvey Weinstein, were they? Nope. So, so in other words, because you actually uphold the teachings of the Torah and of the Bible, they, they excommunicated you? Pretty much. They cursed me. They called me an echo. They called me arrogant. They called me a stupid... Uh, I, there's, there's so much profanity that you wouldn't believe. And if that's not bad enough, I'm related to four of them on the West Coast. They all voted on gender and party. Needless to say... Now, let, Jerry, where did, you, where did you go to this Jewish temple? Where was this? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, Three of them were in Jersey City. Uh, one was in the, uh, several of them when I lived in New, in New York. In the so are you outspoken? Do you make your politics known when you go into a house of worship? No, but when you have a discussion, they ask an opinion. I'm not one to shy away from giving it. I see. So your opinion didn't meet the group think of the liberals. That's what happened. That's what I said. I, I said, show me in the Bible where it says every darn Jew has to have the same mentality. No, you're my kind of guy. Hang in there, Jerry. Let me tell you something. You're, close, you're closer to the truth than they are, Jerry. 
uh, they're the ones who are lost. Jerry, you know, I got to tell you something. As you know, my book, God, Faith, and Reason, will be released on November 14th, even though my publisher sent me a press release with the wrong date on it. It doesn't matter. They said November 17th, but who are they to know when the book is released? I, I'm the one who knows it's on November 14th. But here's the thing to remember is this. The fact of the matter is, this is not a religious book. It's a quest. It's an odyssey. And I, in my book, I draw upon my experiences, my personal experiences of others with God and without God, and I share insights from over 40 years of notes from my own Bible that have provided me with solace and hope. And I'm sure, Jerry, and everyone listening, that my faith journey will help readers find answers about God and many of life's difficult questions. And I hope that you will enjoy the copy of that book when you receive it, Jerry. Maybe you'll find solace in reading God, Faith, and Reason. It's all I can say. I'm not into organized religion. If I were, I would be very happy if those of you who go to a church on a regular basis or go to a synagogue on a regular basis were to explain to people that there's a multiplicity of opinions about God. But I don't want to talk about God. I know all you want to talk about is the indictment. And so before I do anything else, I will not talk about the indictment. Instead, I have a treat for you. An upstate New York female legislator of uh, the... Democrat kind was pulled over for speeding by an honest cop. And I want you to listen to the interchange, which came out today, I believe, on YouTube and hit the newspapers about an hour ago. You got to hear this interchange. Listen carefully. PTSD. I'm sorry. The reason why I pulled you over was because <laughs> you were going 43 and a 30, which was 13 over, okay? I was going you at did... the same pace as every car. I couldn't go okay. slower. They honk. They okay, honk that's... at you. I have PTSD. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help it. I'm going to protest this in court, and you're telling me that you singled me out. In the middle of PTSD, me, right? she's and pretty clear And going at the same pace, right? I no, drive someone with PTSD, she's got a shot. Are you going to listen to me? Or yes, you? I will listen to you, and you're not going to let me go, even though we got me legislator. And I always do everything right, and I follow the law, and I was at the same pace as every other car. Ma'am, you're gonna let me explain this to you here. You let me talk, okay? And then I'll give you a chance to talk, okay? You have to just tell me what you're what you're doing here with the ticket because I am late for a job meeting and I'm gonna. I'm, okay. This is my career. Sorry, I'm having a, a panic attack. I, I, okay. I'm sorry. You need Are you listening attention? to this? Is anyone out there hearing this? Would you like me to call you an ambulance? I've explained everything to you already. But I didn't understand. Okay, and but that's I've, why I I've asked I've been here you, for about 30 minutes explaining. But see, I've already okay. missed my job interview now, okay, and well, I'm asking you. I have other stuff that I need to do, too, I know, but I'm a also. taxpayer in Ulster County. Okay, and I'm I've, also a I've here, in Ulster and I've accommodated and you, you, and I'm asking, I've explained everything you to you to the best of my ability. You didn't explain it to me. I'm not going to argue with you any further. How could anyone take this job as a cop? Everyone has a big mouth on them. But this was a special case. I'm a lure maker in Ulster County. I'm a lure maker. In the middle of her PTSD and her hysterics, she was pretty clear thinking on how to get out of the ticket. How does anyone take a job as a cop anymore in this world of ours? Or even a pilot? How can you be a pilot? Anyone who is excellent, anyone of excellence is now subject to uh, being attacked for being excellent in this country. All right, let's move on. Give me some breather music here. I'll move on. I'm not sure what I want to talk about. I tried a couple of things. I know what you want. I know what you want to hear. I'll give you exactly what you want to hear. Maybe I could get a caller from New York who was in the porn industry. That might be more interesting to me than than the, the Paul Manafort. And that might be more, more brother of Clinton campaign chair. Here's my headlines on michaelsavage.com. Brother of Clinton campaign chair steps down from lobbying firm amid reports of scrutiny from special counsel. Okay. Podesta group plays key role. See, this is red meat. Podesta group plays key role in Manafort indictment. This is what you want to hear. You don't want to hear anything about uh, steak. You don't want to eat steak today. You want to eat that mixed chopped meat from uh, tainted sources. 
this is a sad story. Look what I found for Michael. No, I don't even want to. Las Vegas shooting. California couple that survived attack in Las Vegas die in car crash. Where's God there? Okay, not funny. California amusement park increases security after chaotic night of teen fights. That's a cover-up. It was not teen fights. It was gangs of, quote, youths beating up attendees, stealing their phones and their wallets. Again, cover-up. Kevin Spacey accused of molesting underage boy. Who told you last week, very soon we'd be seeing in Hollywood, a man boy uh, uh, accusations? I told it to you when the, when the thing came out. Judge largely blocks Trump's military transgender ban. I'd like to know what he is under the robe. Update, church decides to remove plaque honoring, honoring George Washington. That's in a George Washington church in Virginia because it makes certain people uncomfortable. I'd say throw them out of the church. If you're uncomfortable with the words George Washington, you ought to move to, to Syria and join ISIS. Most of NFL's Houston Texans kneel during anthem after owner's remark. Okay, I have certain things to say about that, which is stop watching the NFL don't go to the games, turn the shows off, and then when they're not making any more money, who are they going to blame then? You? Okay, 855-400-7282. Act, actor Kenneth Anthony Rapp, Kevin Spacey made a sexual advance to me when I was 14. You know, okay, it happened in 1986. Is there no statute of limitations? What are they going to do, disinter George Washington now and Abraham Lincoln and say he touched someone? You can say that every one of the founding fathers touched someone in 1705. Dig him up out of the grave and burn his corpse again. Molly's desert elephants on edge of annihilation get a fighting chance. This is right up my alley. This scares me. This so hurts me that people kill elephants. So finally, they're putting in anti-poaching squads, but they're not killing the poachers yet. That's what's needed is to go out and kill the poachers before they kill these lovely creatures. Or I have a novel idea for saving the elephants, which is bring them to America. Since people are emigrating from Africa to save themselves, why can't we just lift up entire herds, herds and bring them to, let's say, a sanctuary in Texas or somewhere? I'm, I'm being very serious about it. Or if Texas doesn't work, why not replace the human population in Berkeley, Oakland with elephants? It would be a safer environment for the average human if we had elephants in Berkeley than liberals. At least I think so. Warnings of global outbreak of Black Death as plague continues to spread. Oh, don't tell any of that to the CDC. They're busy studying other things. Health experts are warning there is something different about a new Black Death outbreak spreading across the world. Now, you should understand that the words Black Death unto themselves may be offensive to some and could make certain people feel unwelcome and uncomfortable, but they have not yet gotten around to revising the name of that disease. But you see, in the 1300s, an estimated 50 million lives were lost as a result of the Black Death. Excuse me for saying Black Death again. But some 1300 new cases of the pneumonic plague, which is transmitted by air, have now been confirmed. And now the deadly disease has spread into more African countries after taking root in Madagascar. Countries affected with the Black Plague include South Africa, Mozambique, Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, Comoros, the Seychelles, Mauritius, and reunion, not a good story altogether because as I have told you over the years as a trained epidemiologist, when an epidemic is spread so easily by air, it usually spreads rapidly and will wipe out an awful lot of the human population. God tried a few other times in the past, but he was thwarted in his attempt to cull the herd, and now he's back, and this time with Black Plague. And this, my friends is a product of liberalism and the open borders. See, if we had firm borders, do you know why borders were originally created by nations? They were to keep out people who were not from that nation who might do the indigenous population of the nation harm, whether through war, crime, or disease. But since borders were thrown out first by the Clinton administration and then almost entirely by the Obama administration, we are now suffering the open borders pox that is plaguing not only America, but all of the West, which is in a suicidal spiral. And that is the rest of the story. I'll be right back. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Red meat. That's enough with the song for the day. I'm getting a headache from it. You want red meat? I'm going to give you red meat in a minute. If you're calling about New York when it was dirty in the 70s or the uh, idiots in the NFL, stay on because I'm going to take your uh, calls on that. An article just came out. Paul Manafort judges who are Deborah A. Robinson and Amy Berman Jackson. Are you ready for this? You better hang on to your seat pants. The lawyers, both of them, are extreme liberals who supported Hillary Clinton. The veteran judge that Paul Manafort and his associate Rick Gates will appear in front of today, well, they're appearing probably right now, uh, has presided over a list of big-name defendants. You ready for this? And after she gets through with them, the case will be handed over to an Obama appointed judge who donated one thousand dollars to clinton's 1992 presidential campaign you ready for the rest of the story u.s district magistrate judge deborah a robinson the preliminary judge has overseen cases involving former washington dc mayor barry and nba player alan iverson are you ready for more here it comes she was sworn in as a magistrate judge in 1988 and is a graduate of Morgan State U and Emory U School of Law. She is the one who boosted a fine from $10,000 to $50,000 for Sandy Berger, a former national security advisor to President Bill Clinton, who pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of mishandling classified information. Now, you know and I know that Sandy Berger, was arrested for stealing classified information in his underwear and socks out of the National Archives. Anyone else who did it would go to jail for life. So big deal. She boosted the fine from 10 grand to 50 grand. Berger was reviewing Clinton-era documents connected with the work of the September 11th Commission, and he told the court he cut three documents up and put them in in the trash. Are you listening to me? He didn't put them in the trash. I know the story well. He put them in his socks. That's why he was called Sandy Socks Berger. So... They settled on a $10,000 fine for this kind of crime in front of Judge Robinson, who showed how fair we, she was by upping it to fifty grand. Wait, it gets even worse. This judge, Robinson, presided over the trial of Lewis Scooter Libby, an ex-White House aide who was convicted of lying to authorities and obstructing the probe of an O3 leak of a CIA operative's identity. Libby, who really did nothing, nothing really, was sentenced to two and a half years in prison but had his sentence commuted by President George W. Bush. So it's a kangaroo court from the get-go. The judges are the kind of judges you would have seen in the Soviet Union, in my estimation. They already shopped this case of Manafort and the other one to two judges who would have been very happy in the Soviet Union in the 1930s doing the bidding of Mr. Berrier, the head of the secret police in the Soviet Union. That's the world that we live in. That's the world that we live in. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The fact that this president uh, has said that he wanted to lift sanctions, the fact that we passed law that said uh, strengthen those sanctions against Russia, and he has not implemented the law that we passed, he won't say a negative word about Putin. There's enough there for she wants war responsible, with Russia, this reasonable members of Congress to talk about impeachment. This woman's insane, by the way, and a vicious, vicious, crazy human being who is dangerous for every American out there. She wants war with Russia. That's all she wants, Maxine Waters. This is what she's using to appease to her moronic base. But it gets worse. It just came out moments ago who the judges are who are going to be reviewing this indictment. 
Are you ready for this? I told you who she was, Jackson. Are you ready for this? Earlier this year, this Judge Jackson, so-called, a Harvard Law graduate, dismissed a lawsuit brought against Hillary Clinton by relatives of victims of the 2012 Benghazi attack. This prize judge, Jackson, ruled that Hillary Clinton neither enabled the attack by communicating through her private email server, nor did she defame the victims' families in the aftermath, according to the Washington Times. So Jackson, the lawyer, the judge rather, who is going to be crucifying Manafort and others, spared Hillary Clinton under some double talk. It should be noted that this judge, Jackson, also contributed $1,000 to Clinton's 1992 Democratic presidential campaign. And wait, while previously working at a law firm, represented former Democratic Congressman William J. Jefferson in a corruption trial. Now, I remember that trial. William J. Jefferson looked looked it up very carefully. That former Louisiana congressman was sentenced in 09 to 13 years in prison on bribery charges after being caught hiding $90,000 in cash in his freezer. Did you know any of this? So this is the same judge who oversaw these cases, who is now going to oversee the case of Jackson. Paul Manafort judges, who are Deborah A. Robinson and Amy Berman Jackson, a fabulous article with their uh, color drawings, color drawings of them by uh, artists of Deborah Robinson, so-called judge and U.S. District Judge Amy Berman Jackson. These are lifers. They sound to me like the type who screams that they have PTSD when pulled over for a speeding ticket and threatens the co- and threaten the cop. That's the world we're in. Let's take some calls on other topics on the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-400-7282. Steve on WABC, are you still there? Welcome to the program. What's your topic? Thanks for having me. I lived in uh, in Midtown in the, in the uh, late 80s and 90s. I was on 44 between 5th and 6th when it was still really rough and had all the foreign shops and everything else. And I'll tell you, that city had more heart and more soul back then than it does now. Because it was real, it was gritty. And you mean was- you don't like a Starbucks on every corner and a Cuisinart store next to a Starbucks and next to a Cuisinart store another Starbucks and next to that another store selling the same stuff that you saw 15 feet away? What's wrong with you? Look, you go outside anytime after the sun supposedly goes down. You have no idea what time it is. It's like 24-hour sun there. It's so damn bright. It, it, it's... There's no. What, what, what are they actually selling in New York on 42nd Street now that all of the dirt and crime has been cleaned up? What's there? It's one story after the other. It's it's tourist attractions and it's it's you name it. Starbucks. It's Disney. It's this. It's that. It's, so so it looks like a mall, like a like any mall in America. So you like the the grit, the grime that you actually like the the dirty New York better. Well, you know what it was, though? As much as there was the grit and grime, there was more heart and there was more soul. For every one of the porn shops and everything else, there were still the little pop-up churches and the little, the little places where you could go in there, you know, for the salvation, for the homeless guys and everything else. There was real spirit there. Now it's- oh, wait. I, so are you into religion when you say that? Did you actually go to those churches? <laughs> Look, I, I can't argue. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, a Catholic who's wrestling with a nine-year-old who thought that his... Uh, First Communion meant no more CCD and uh, just came to the realization he's got another five years to go. So, uh, oh, 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 so you're a young father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got a good, you see, the main thing is you got a sense of humor, which is going to save you and your son. Well, uh, it, it, it's the important thing because he's already asking questions saying, Daddy, how is it we all came from the same person? And it's not like, look. Uh, you got to take a look. Oh, children are smart. No, they ask questions that can shake you to your core and the answers are hard to find again i'm going to tell you there's a story in my book god faith and reason which i'm going to send you about my lawyer danny horowitz and his two young children and what his four-year-old daughter asked him about god and how he had to answer it it's not easy to answer those questions because children don't let you go they're very logical children if you say to children god is this and they say well what, what does that mean and they go da, 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 da. there's almost no answer at the end of the day is there no, and, and trying to explain the idea of taking something with faith is much harder than saying it, it's something tangible and, and able to say, well, it's because of this and this. And he will not let me go any time that I try to say, well, you just have to believe. 
Like ah, see, when you try to steer a child to faith, they become more reasonable than we are. Hey, look, he's more reasonable and rational than most of the people I know at this point in life. Well, it's a challenge, and it's why a lot of children stop believing in anything, because they can't get the, the most fundamental questions answered straight. They go off the rails because they don't know what to believe in. Well, he asks me when he sees the, sees the news and sees, is, Daddy, are all Muslims bad? Is ISIS bad? Are all these bad? If we all believe in God, why are they bad? And I have to explain, well, we believe in different things. We have a core belief, but what we believe is different than what they believe. Well, why do they want to hurt us if they believe it? It's just an endless, you know, it's an endless argument. Well, there was an answer to that question as well, and that's an easy one to answer to a child. You said you're a Catholic, correct? Yes, sir. You say, well, our Bible teaches people to love their neighbor. Their Bible does not teach them to love their neighbor. <laughs> and the reason our Bible now teaches us to love our neighbor is because there was a time that our Bible was very, very mean very cold-hearted and told us to do bad things to people who didn't believe the way we did. But about 500 years ago, our church went through what was known as a Reformation Son, and we learned to teach a nicer way, a better way, a kinder way. Unfortunately, Islam has never gone through a Reformation Son. That is a factual statement, Steve. I agree, sir. I agree. And that is in God, faith, and reason. Because most modern Muslims understand that Islam must go through a reformation in order for the fringe element to stop being so crazy by interpreting their Bible literally. Steve, thank you. I'm going to send you God, faith, and reason for you and your son. Okay, 855. I didn't think we'd get into the God thing, but that was pretty good. It's better than Manafort, isn't it, and the judges? It's better than this stuff. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. How about the NFL? and the ingrates who make millions of dollars a year spitting on our flag and our national anthem. David, on WABC in New York, what do you think about that? Um, I've never followed football in my life, and um, just lately I've been seeing signs all around sports bars. I live uh, a little bit north of the city in New York, and they all say no NFL, no NFL TVs here, and I'm like... Oh, what? <laughs> you mean the, bar, the bars are putting up signs that say no NFL TV here? Correct. Oh my God! The average Eddie is finally standing up to the to the wonderful people in the NFL who think that the money comes from heaven. Yeah, I mean it's it's really it's really about time. I've never. I'd like to know how any cop or fireman in this country of any race could ever 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 patronize an NFL game after seeing what ingrates they are. Well, my philosophy is you don't like it here, then get get out. Yeah, you don't like it here, move to Syria. Well, move to England where you love the Queen all of a sudden. Don't you love that one? David, I'm, I don't know if you're a religious, I don't know if you're a religious guy or a, a person who seeks the answers, but I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith and Reason. If you don't want to give it to someone who does. 855-407-282, phone number, michaelsavage.com is the website. Get the free um, newsletter. goes out to you three times a week. It's free, actually, just by signing up on my website. Let's go again. We're getting all these callers out of New York. I can't help it if you don't if you don't want to call from everywhere else in America. You know, I'm getting New York callers because they're talkative people, and they're thinking people, and they'd rather listen to other topics than just the uh, mixed hamburger meat of the wall banger. W A. Oh, we did W A B C already. Okay, Harry in New York on W A B C again. A B C. Harry, what's your topic? Hi, Michael. Uh, my topic was God, faith, and reason. But um, if I may uh, add something to the NFL uh, beforehand, I'm a huge Washington Redskins fan. And I've been on the waiting list for season tickets for over 10 years. It's the hardest ticket to get. This week, I get a call. Oh, sir, we have, we have tickets for next season available. And if you buy oh. tickets now, we'll give you two free games. And I'm like, I said, what happened? There's, there's a, I, I'm on the list for 10 years. They said, Tons of people canceled their season tickets to the Washington Redskins for next season. Huh. Well, good. So, uh, I mean, I, I... All right, now let's go on to the big topic, which is what you called about. What is it? All right, the big topic is I, I, I believe in the afterlife. And I think it's very important... And I, I went on a trip not too long ago with this girl, and she's atheist. 
we, we, we sit down in a restaurant, and, uh, you know, she orders a nice fish, a fish dish. And uh, the dish comes, and I tell her, listen, I said, you know, the fish jumped out of the ocean onto the plate. And she looks at me like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I said, it jumped out of the ocean onto the plate, and it, and it, it got beautiful. She said, no, there's a chef, professional chef that goes to school, that trains, that makes fish like this. I told her, listen, if you're telling me a little simple fish dish needs an expert chef to make it, how could you tell me that this world, which is so expertly crafted, has to by itself? That makes no sense. That's brilliant. Did you come up uh, with that on your own? I did, I did. And she still didn't buy the argument. I couldn't believe it. That's really interesting. You're saying, well, let me, you're saying to this girl, the fish dish that looks so good on your plate required an expert chef to prepare that dish, and you don't believe that an expert wasn't required to build this perfect this world of ours, which is so complex? Exactly. So is that your only proof in your own mind that God exists? That's not the most tangible proof that, that, that you have. Uh, there's also proof we don't have any any notion of history written anywhere, you know, uh, of anything else. Within well, what do you think? What do you think happens when you die? Uh, I think we're 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 judged for the good deeds and the bad deeds, and 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 we're punished first to get that out of the way, and then we reward it for eternity for the good deeds that... Uh, are, you a, are you a religious person, Harry? I am, yes. Are you a very religious I, person or a kind of a moderately religious person? Moderate religious. I mean, my family is more religious than me. I'm like the black sheep in my family, but... Oh, no wonder you listen to this show. <laughs> you should know, my, my brother, who lives in, in like a very religious neighborhood, turned me on to you. He said, you know, there's a, there's a guy in the radio you're going to love. You know? Oh, that's you not. Know. Well, even religious people <laughs> listen to me. I know that. It's a funny thing. Yeah. Harry, I'm sending, you God, I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. I hope you get some solace out of it, and you can share it with other people. Uh, I am running short of time. We're not just talking about God or the afterlife or this life or fish dishes. We are talking about the extreme partisan judges who are going to be judging Paul Manafort and others, and it's a darn disgrace. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Hey, look, sooner or later, you know your car's going to break down if it's an older car, right? You know that. It happens to every truck and SUV car that's older. And if it's lucky, you know, if you're a lucky guy, it happens while you're still under the warranty. And the repairs will be covered. But, 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 but. What if it breaks down after the warranty expires? You could be out of pocket thousands of dollars to get fixed. That's why I recommend getting extended coverage from carshield.com. 5000 for a new engine or tranny is pretty pretty ordinary today. Even a sensor that's out can cost over 1000 bucks. That's why I say go to carshield.com. Why? Because you can even get your own mechanic to fix it or go to the dealership to fix it. You're not going to wait for a check in the mail in the mail. Car Shield gets the mechanic paid directly. Car Shield's administrators even give you the VIP treatment, providing 24-7 roadside assistance in a rental car while yours is in the shop. So you're not left stranded in the cold. If your car is 3 to 12 years old, pay attention. It doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. No, sorry, Bob. Car Shield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims they're ready to help you. Save yourself thousands of potential car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle service protection before it's too late. Call 800-CAR-6100. Real easy. And if you call 800-CAR-6100 and mention Savage or, or go to carshield.com and use Savage, you get 10% off. That's carshield.com, code SAVAGE, deductible, may apply. Now, 
For those of you who think Manafort is being railroaded, of course you're right. And that he has almost nothing to do with Trump, of course you're right. But there's a legal website called lawnews.com that says his constitutional rights were overstepped by the aggressive prosecution of Mueller and his team of vandals. Apparently, they had a search warrant that was granted by some judge over there, and some of the material that they gathered by breaking in Manafort's door and busting in like a Gestapo, they collected some material that may not have been covered by the warrant. And the Manafort's lawyers raised it at the time. And they're saying, did the agents do anything wrong? It's not clear, but it certainly could raise some serious constitutional questions that could taint the investigation. In fact, during the time that Mueller's thugs broke down Manafort's door at 5 in the morning, they took documents from Manafort that were covered by attorney-client privilege, according to sources that told CNN that at the time. Lawyers from the Wilmer Hall law firm representing Manafort at the time warned Gestapo agent Mueller's office that their search warrant didn't allow access to attorney materials. So my friends, this is not over until it's over. It will cost Manafort every dime he's worth and then some, and they're just trying to turn the next one up the chain. Thank you, Maxine Waters, for creating the Soviet Union. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. What is the biggest news of the day? Gangs of youths hold up families at Great America. No description of gangs. A hundred people, mostly teens. Again, no description of the teens. I suspect that they were all young priests and rabbis on an outing holding people up. And then they uh, beat people up, stole their wallets and phones. You know, rabbis and priests do that because that's what you have to assume since they're covering up any description of the teens. Got punched in the face, one visitor wrote. Park officials did not immediately return phone calls Monday. You realize there's a crime spree in the San Francisco area. Did you know that? Did you know liberalism is the most crime-inducing political philosophy on the planet? Did you know that you cannot walk in San Francisco without stepping on human feces? It is dried, of course. I, don't get me wrong. But there's human feces all over the downtown financial district. And, of course, there's plague now spreading. There's hepatitis spreading. But don't tell the city fathers and mothers they're too busy robbing the treasury at least that's what i think now of course i'm only a talk show host that doesn't exist it's now become that a gang of youths you know what that's an acronym for a gang of youths held up families at a great america amusement park and there was no description of the gangs by the vermin who run the san francisco newspaper i'm suspecting that the gang of youths were all jewish and christian youths on a Christian outing, and they held up normal families uh, with their children. That's the only guess I could make as to why they're covering it up, because they want to make certain that Jews and Christians are protected here in San Francisco. One man or a few men stood up to the gang youths as their wallets and phones were being stolen in front of their children, uh, and he was punched in the face. Now, where were they? This is a side note. Where was the security at California's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara while these gangs were assaulting families. Answer, they were working with the gangs of youths. Why, that's the same reason Best Buy went out of business in Sausalito. That's who they hired for security. The gangs that were holding up, that's my guess. Can't prove it. So it starts with Manafort. No one knows who he is. He worked for Trump for three minutes. And he's indicted for things that nothing to do with the Trump. We don't know whether he did them or not. We know they broke his door down. They used Gestapo tactics on him, which the left applauded, incidentally. And that was before Weinstein. 
That was before Halperin. That was before Spacey. But very soon the left will come to understand that a fascistic government, no matter who is behind it, is not good for anyone. And then later in the day, another bombshell. Podesta resigns from his lobbying firm. Now you say, well, who is Manafort? Who is Podesta? That's exactly the point. The average person out there does not know who Paul Manafort is. They don't know who Tony Podesta is. This is all in-house gossip. It's uh, damn Repub, Repub, damn. They get the guy. They did Clinton. We, they indicted Clinton. They impeached him. Nothing happened. So now we're going to get one of theirs. This is the way politics have devolved in America. I feel as though I'm watching the Ukrainian parliament itself. You know, one of the things I used to like about television when they showed uh, international news was the Ukrainian parliament when they beat each other up in Ukraine while wearing suits and ties. At least there was entertainment value. Why is there no such sport here in America? Why are they so polite to each other when they're stabbing each other in the back, I wonder? No one knows who Manafort is. No one knows he worked for Trump, uh, campaign manager, for three months. No one even knows who Podesta is, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman. And I asked today on Twitter, will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence and against whom? No kidding. They used fascist techni techniques, broke his door down, woke him up in the morning, seized his records. They indicted him as I said they would. We all knew that was coming. Now what? The next in the middle of the day, Tony Podesta, founder of the Podesta Group, brother of former Hillary Clinton campaign chairman Johnny, resigning from his lobbying company. Why? because Tony Podesta and his lobbying firm were subjects of a federal investigation by the same special counsel, Robert Mueller, okay? And the Podesta Group was one of several firms that worked in a campaign called the European Center for Modern Ukraine. The campaign was led by Paul Manafort and prompted Ukraine's image in the West. That's not a bad thing, is it? So in other words, both Podesta and Manafort worked for Ukraine. Isn't that interesting? Now, you do know that Obama meddled in foreign elections. He meddled in the Israel election. That's a well-known fact with some vermin from New York City running opposition against Netanyahu. Obama meddled in the elections of at least three nations, and we hear nothing about it. But I, I'm telling you right now, I have a very good instinct for what the people out there feel, what they want to think about. They don't care about any of this. Do you think they really care about Mueller? Do you think they care about this guy who is like a Dracula right now? I know he's a he's a revered American legislator. He ran the FBI, he's clean as a Eagle Scout, bright. Great soldier, yes, he was all of that. But once they become political, all of their good deeds of the past seem to dissolve. Will Manafort crack and turn state's evidence? That's the object. How can we speculate on what he's going to do? He worked three months for him. Now they indicted him on nothing to do with the campaign. This is what happens in a Stalinist government. You think that this is kosher? You're wrong. And I don't really care how fair-minded people are saying, um, whatever his name is, the DA, I don't remember, remember his name. I'm supposed to know his name. Mueller, 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 that tall guy. Uh, he's not being fair because once they open an indictment, they can go anywhere in it. They were, they were investigating the Russia collusion story, right? But they found nothing, so they got him on something else. All right, fine, but what does it have to do with Donald Trump? Nothing, but the vermin in the media already made a linkage. The linkage is already Trump's campaign manager indicted. Well, on what, though? This is how Wolf Blitzer uh, thrives. This is how they thrive on innuendo and smear. They're worse than you can imagine. I wanted to go to the most fundamental question of what is freedom, because we keep hearing the term bandied about by conservatives, which is they're selling freedom. Freedom is their is their stock and trade, that somehow they know what freedom is. No one else ever heard of the word. It was not invented before they came along. No one ever heard of freedom. No one knows what freedom is. They got the book on freedom. No one else knows what freedom is. So I'm going to ask you, what is freedom? Because if we are a free nation, as we think we are, if we are the freest nation on earth, then why are we enslaved by drugs, pornography, and other addictions? If we're so free then why are there so many drug addicts and alcohol addicts? If we're so free, why are we so addicted to pornography? And then I keep hearing that if you're really free, you're anti-government. Really? Is that true? So you want anarchy now? Who do you want running the streets? 
the criminal gangs? Well, they say, no, no, I don't mean free of all government. We need the police. Why, we love the men in, in blue. Why, we support them. Do you? What else do you support in government? Do you support red lights, yellow lights, and green lights on the highway and stop signs? Why, yes, we support those things. Oh, so you support that. Uh-huh. Well, do you support anything else in the government? Well, yes, but we believe in limited government. We're anti-big government. We are, uh, we are the freedom-loving Americans, the patriots. We're the great Americans, and the others are all bad. Okay, so what do you mean you don't believe in government? Certainly you have to have limited government, don't you? Well, if you have a limited government, so you agree that there needs to be some government. So if you agree there has to be some government, we have to decide as the governed what we want governed and what we want controlled. That's the real question, Plato, isn't it? Yeah, so therefore, uh, Glaucon, what do we do next? Well, Glaucon says what we have to do next is arrest all the pornographers and ban all pornography and seize all the assets of all the pornographers that they have accrued over the last 30 years, even if they've hidden the money with their children, grandchildren, grandmothers, or in the Cayman Islands. Seize all of their money, use all of the money for pornography rehabilitation, and put the rest of them in prison for the rest of their lives. I know you're applauding inside your hearts. Now we'll go down the next step. What do you do about the drug addiction problem? Well, you could, you could spend money on treatment from today until tomorrow. It's not going to have much of an effect. Everybody knows the recidivism rate on drug treatment is very, very high. Okay, and, and there's a reason for it. The real answer is not treating drug addiction. The real answer is stopping the flood of drugs into America. I told you many years ago I went to Malaysia, and I was shocked when I was driving in from the airport at Kuala Lumpur to see a gigantic billboard the size of an apartment building that said, uh, using drugs in Malaysia is punishable by death. It was very clear that there was a real campaign to stop the use of drugs in Malaysia, and they punished drug dealers by killing them, and there was a reason for it, because they were near the Golden Triangle where drugs are produced, and they knew that the entire nation would be addicted to drugs unless they cracked down on the drug dealers. I don't hear anyone talking about any of these things, by the way. So now we're seeing a big scandal of Harvey Weinstein. When have you last heard about the scandal of the fact that he's been promoting violence in his movies so from the get-go and rampant sexuality in his movies from the get-go? You say, well, are you a prude? No. Do you want censorship? Uh, I'm not so sure I don't. How's that? I don't know. I grew up in a time where there was self-censorship. I grew up in a time where the film producers wouldn't dare produce this kind of uh, salacious material. And so there was no need for censorship at that time. I also grew up in a time when I remember my father again saying to me, have you noticed that in every movie with criminals, the criminals always die or go to jail at the end? I said, I didn't notice that. He said, well, it's, the movies have to be produced like that, he said to me, because the government wants the message to go out that crime does not pay. I said, that makes sense. So you say, oh, that was terrible. What kind of freedom is that? that you're not letting the Harvey Weinsteins of the world show you that crime pays. We want freedom. We want total freedom in America. We want the Weinsteins to be able to show every little boy that it's good to be a criminal and you'll get away with it. And your friends who will kill themselves studying are the morons. That's the kind of freedom we want here. That's what we want in America today, to allow the Weinsteins of our time to run, uh, run r roughshod over the country, over the soul of the nation. No, no, I think the government's got to get, get involved in the movies, got to get involved in the drug epidemic, which uh, Trump says he's doing. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. More treatment? Big deal. Half the treatment facilities are owned by drug cartels, so far as I can tell. They get you coming and going. Well, look into the board of directors of drug treatment facilities. Why don't you see if there's any interlocking corporate directorships between uh, the treatment facility giants and the manufacturers of hard drugs? See if they're not sitting on pharmaceutical boards and on treatment boards. And then you'll understand why nothing will really happen. It could even be worse than that, for all I know. If I were writing the script, it would be much worse than that. But I'm not a script writer, I'm only a talk show host. I have a limited knowledge of everything. My limited knowledge, one man of seven billion has a very limited knowledge of the world. But with the limited knowledge that I have, I express it. It's that, you know, it's very interesting. I actually thought of that for the first time because if you're in the media, you get megalomaniac. You become a megalomaniac and you think that you know everything and you're smarter than everybody. And then when the microphone goes off or the Klieg lights go off and you got to get up in the morning and there you are again, the same exact worm that God made. 
The same thing made from that foul, foul drop. That same thing you are. And you got to get yourself up and wash your face and have your coffee or your chai or whatever you make to make yourself better than the next man. Not coffee, of course, if you're superior and you're a vegan. You wouldn't have something as evil as coffee. You have something like chai, some special drink only for you, made only for you at the 7,000-foot range, picked by dwarfs of a certain spiritual class. God forbid someone should touch the leaf that you're drinking who is impure. And then at night, after your work day is over, all you purity freaks, uh, you go to a nightclub till 4 o'clock in the morning and fill yourself with garbage. The next day, of course, you're a vegan again, drinking chai, lecturing everybody on white privilege and racism. And the cycle continues. There's another addiction in this country, which is an addiction to lies. The lie of white privilege. What a convenient way to hate white people. What a convenient, brilliant way to attack an entire race through racism and call yourself purer and holier than thou. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. As you know, my book, God, Faith, and Reason, will be released on November 14th. But here's the thing to remember is this. The fact of the matter is, this is not a religious book. It's a quest. It's an odyssey. And I, in my book, I draw upon my experiences, my personal experiences of others with God and without God. And I share insights from over 40 years of notes from my own Bible that have provided me with solace and hope. And I'm sure that my faith journey will help readers find answers about God and many of life's difficult questions. Maybe you'll find solace in reading God, faith, and reason. It's all I can say. I'm not into organized religion. If I were, I would be very happy if those of you who go to a church on a regular basis or go to a synagogue on a regular basis were to explain to people that there's a multiplicity of opinions about God. But I don't want to talk about God. I know all you want to talk about is the indictment. I don't know if I'm going to do Mueller anymore. I know you want him to go. He's not going. He's not stepping down. No, Trump is not going to uh, dismiss him. If he does, if he does Trump's in, uh, going to be impeached. Trump can't do anything but let it play out. And what's going to happen here is they don't really want Paul Manafort. You know that. You mean, come on, let's be le- obvious. This is the way they went after people in organized crime. This is the standard operating procedure. They get anyone they can on anything. Then they flip that person to get the next one up the chain. Then they flip that one, then the next one up the chain. That, 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 till they, they go for the peasant avante, so to speak, look at the Bavalacci papers or whatever, and eventually try to bring down the whole. They don't achieve it. They never have achieved it. They've never gotten to the top. They never will get to the top. They never get to the bottom. All it does is just it satisfies the masses. We just want to see blood sport. All of us love this very much because it takes us out of our boring little lives. And also, we also must remember that I told you the average man has such a horrible life. The average person has such a horrible life, I should say today. I'm so sexist sometimes. I I can't get used to it. I say the average man. There are women in the world. I came to understand that after many years of thinking about it. The average person in the world, shall I say the average humanoid in the world, leads such an ordinary life of desperation that when they see big people falling, it makes them feel good that they're not big. What they say is, aha, thank God I'm not well known. I'm safe. No one knows me. See what I'm saying? That's how that works. I went on the New York Post. They have a video of a Democrat lawmaker from upstate New York uh, who broke down when a state trooper, a local cop, pulled her over for speeding. You will not believe her as she screams, I have PSD! I have PTSD. What are you doing to me? You can't believe this. Why did you single me out? I have PTSD. I'm an important legislator. I'm on the way to work. Who are you? What kind of cop are you? I'm going to fight this. This is a liberal woman, especially in politics, to the to the nth degree. Savage. Serving for 
filet mignon, cayenne gulf shrimp. All the best we can gather from around the world. The real story is that Tony Podesta stepped down from his lobbying job. This is actually a bigger story uh, than Mueller's uh, phony indictment. And so we'll see how that plays out. I mean, Tony Podesta is a very big fish. He is the brother of a campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. And you can only ask yourself why. The answer is because he's about the next one to fall. Now, if you were Mueller and you were so roundly criticized by all fair-minded people for conducting a witch hunt, wouldn't you want to reach out and show the people that you're fair and that you're going to indict people on the other side as well? Yes, especially since you know it, it will never lead to an indictment of Hillary Clinton and the Uranium One scandal. They'll take down a, a small fish and a, and a fall guy and leave it at that and say, well, we, we did everything we could. We were as fair as we could be and blah, blah, blah. So is this the, is the way the scenario is written. And, you know, you, you, just don't, you don't have to be a genius to see where this is going. I believe Tony Podesta is, is destined for, uh, well, that's up to Mueller what he's destined for. I got callers on every topic you can imagine. Phone number is 855-407-282. Of course, you think the big story is the indictment of Manafort, but most of you don't realize that Manafort only worked for Trump for three months, and the indictment has nothing to do with Russia. But this is how a smear campaign works. You indict as high up as you can, and then you imply through your friends like Wolf Blitzer, Rachel Madcow, and the others, that it is related to the Russia probe, and then you bring out the mad dog, Maxine Waters, who says, I'm waiting for the facts to come out, but I want impeachment. This is what's called a Stalinist regime in reverse. They're subject to a Stalinist in, 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 in inquiry here is what you're, what you're seeing. And I don't really want to do this all. If you think I'm going to do this all week, you better find another place for your ears. I'm not doing this all week. I'm already on strike against the whole Mueller job. I'm sick of it all. To me, it's nothing but dirty politics. It's that simple. They couldn't get Trump one way, so they're trying to get him another. They lost the election. They don't want to lose the election. They're trying to overturn the election. They want her to be president. So what, what else is new under the sun? This is the nation you wanted to live in? This is the world that you think is a liberal world to live in a world like this? I don't. I think it's the most illiberal world you could imagine. Let's take some callers. Kathy in Alaska, line four. Kathy, what's on your mind? I'm glad you're not going to uh, do this all week long. Um, I'd rather hear sages and saints telling their stories like it's i assume your book is kind of like on that level well no it's not that i quote anyone else i don't go to their sources and talk about what other sages said no, no it's no. all my no it's okay. in my books no no the book is all my observations my glimpses of god no one else's it's one man's odyssey someone said it's like the missing book of uh the a missing book from the old testament one of the old prophets I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but, you know, if I don't, who will? Since I'm invisible on Fox News and anywhere, anywhere else. Isn't it interesting that you listen to me on this show and you can't see me anywhere else? Why is that? Why am I such a bad guy? You're not a bad guy. And I'm, I'm not saying that your book would be other words. Your book is like a sage telling a story. They didn't sit with the book. They, sit and t they sat and talked about their experience. All right. Well, that no, truthfully, Kathy, that is true. And you are getting a free copy of God, Faith and Freedom. And I thank you for being such a good sport. 855-407-282. I don't want to talk about Manafort. I've done it for two hours. It's enough already. Isn't there something else we can talk about? Jim is very busy. He's doing call screening. He is doing board operating and he's taking down the names of those who win a book. Other than that, he's trying to breathe in between all of it and uh, keep his eyes focused. But that's the nature of the business today that we're in. One man does all. One man does all behind the screen. Jim should get a Nobel Prize for the pressure he is under. And I'm trying to do the best I can, uh, given the skeleton crew that I have right now, uh, um, to deal with. Uh, let us see what we're talking about now. KSFO Rich Line 3, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thank you for finally getting through it. I, I appreciate you. I'm a fan. Uh, I've actually died four times in my life. And... What I can tell you is, you know, I, I deal with a lot of stuff. Basically, I agree with you when I was listening on, on your line. Uh, there is no organized religion on this rock that has all the answers. And any that say that they do are full of it. 
multiple times. Well, t- one t- time. t- in, oh, hold on, Rich. I'm very curious. You said you died four times without spending a lot of time. Okay. One under, what cir- and under what circumstances did you die? All right. Once was a surfing accident. I was under the water for more than 12 minutes. Uh, my friends were out there. I came up out in the shipping lane, 200 feet of water. I was down in the mud, came up. Uh, they've been out there for 10, 15 minutes, no water in my lungs, et cetera. Another one, uh, a hospital in Petaluma, whatever. Uh, I was, uh, they had me out because of some messed up stuff. I, uh, I saw myself. They had me out before I went into the operating room. My consciousness comes to, and I see myself in the left room. I'm flatlined. I, again, I feel the hand on my shoulder, the same voice. This is the same voice every time. Tell me I'm going to be okay. And I'm back in my body. A lot of pain that time. Uh, another, well, there's there's several others, but they're they're kind of similar. It's always like the same voice, the same. And I, I'm not like a hardcore religious. You know, but Rich, I have to ask a question. If if you died four times and came back from the dead four times, and you believe there's an all powerful, benevolent, righteous God or spirit that saved you, why would this benevolent or righteous spirit have killed you four times? Oh, it's, I don't think it killed me. I think, you know, the, the circumstances on why I got there was my choice to go surfing when the rip was real bad. It was my choice to be in a couple other circumstances that I shouldn't have done. Uh, and why why I'm safe, I mean, I, I know myself to be a decent guy. I have a certain set of values. Like, uh, you know, our, our society today, you know, thievery is okay. You know, hey, people do it. You know, I'm not that way. I have... But, okay, so Rich, just for the sake of the large audience that's listening right now, when you were down there for 12 minutes, what did you see? Actually, uh, I remember getting drug out like because uh, the rip was bad, the sand going too much. And next thing I know, I wake up in this like really thick ooze, and I just started swimming. Yes, there was a light. I didn't think of it as the proverbial light. I just started swimming. And then I, I, I panic. I go, I'm not breathing. And the pan- but did all of these experiences change your life in any way and make you behave differently? Actually, unfortunately, not too much. Um, <laughs> I can be honest about that. I, I, I am who I am. I've always tried to be a decent person. I don't know whether that's an innate thing. Uh, my- yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe it's your luck, lucky that you had great parents and a good upbringing and you're, you're a good, decent person. Well, so, I, look, hey, Bray Rich, all I can say is I have nothing to say, but I am sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason, which is my odyssey. Every uh, few pages, there's a biblical quote from the Old Testament, such as this on page 143. They are become as well-fed horses, lusty stallions. Everyone nayeth after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Jeremiah 5, 8, and 9. So <laughs> the reason I took some of the quotes out of my Old Testament and put them into my book, and some of them are full-page quotes out of Isaiah and whatnot, is for the people who are not really religious, they're going to get a taste of the Bible. With, it's a kind of a light way to get a taste of the Bible while reading a secular book. It's an interesting trick I've evolved, I've evolved here to get you to look at some of the sayings from the prophets of the Bible as you read my book. I'm, I'm hoping God rewards me for bringing his word to you through my trickery. Surely our di- our diseases he did bear and our pains he carried, whereas we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Isaiah 53, 4. You know, Isaiah was one of my favorite prophets. If he were alive today, he'd be a great talk show host. And if men strive together and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart, and yet no harm follow, he shall be surely fined according as the woman's husband shall lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine, Exodus twenty one twenty two. A lot of our common law, whether you know it or not, actually derives from the Old Testament. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, a lot of our common law is not derived from Harvard Law School. It's derived from the Old Testament. It's, a lot of it is in there. For my people is foolish. They know not me. They are, Scot- they are Scottish children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Jeremiah four twenty two. He would have made a great talk show host by the way. So you want to talk only about the Manafort, the charges, the this, the that. You think I'm going to do it all week. Are you kidding? I can't do it all week. I'm not going to do the God book all week. I'm not going to do that either. I'm holding my fire on the God book until the week of publication. And then I open up with all 16-inch guns from the book. 
and I will preach to you. And you know that for these 23 years this March, 23 years on the radio, I began in a little itty local talk show host in 1994 after many other careers. And uh, it was on a local station, KSFO, and I revolutionized talk radio in the Bay Area because I was the only conservative ever heard in the Bay. No one ever heard anything like it. Well, there were a few great guys around, don't get me wrong, and they were pushing their message, but no one had heard it done like I did it. Let's put it to you that way. And so for decades, I've been teaching my political faith of borders, language, and culture to millions of you on my nationally syndicated radio show, The Savage Nation. But I've never given you, my audience, a look into my religious faith and my ideas about the Judeo-Christian foundation of the American culture that I have fought for all of my life to preserve. And, and as I'm telling you this, our Judeo-Christian culture is being attacked day and night. And whenever you see things, a little story such as came out of Washington, D.C., one of the oldest churches in Virginia had a pew in which George Washington and his family prayed and a little plaque over that pew where they sat. And these idiots who are running the church took down that memorial, a little plaque over that pew, because they said it was unwelcoming, that it offended some people in the congregation. What I would say is throw them out of the congregation. You're going to a congregation where the founding father of the United States of America sat and prayed, and that makes you uncomfortable? Then what the hell are you doing? I don't know what's legal anymore, what's illegal. Go back to the filthy country you came from. If you don't like my nation, go back where you came from and go worship mud and stones. Go worship uh, chicken feathers. Why doesn't anyone stand up to these terrorists? Why are we living through a tyranny of the minority right now? Why are we the majority? Living with this tyranny of the minority, when did it happen that we became so cowed by them? Every time I open up a newspaper and I see a big mouth trying to tear something down, why is it an obese, ugly woman with tattoos all over her body? She's uncomfortable with George Washington? Well, what country is she comfortable in? What faith or faithlessness is she comfortable with? If it is not with America, then she should get out of America. It's that simple. You're not going to change this country's faith. I can tell you that, honey. If you're one of those whistleblowers who likes to tear things down and beat people up all in the name of diversity, let me tell you how this ends. Not well for you. I have lived through other cases of mass hysteria in this country. I've seen it a very long period of time. And every one of these diseases of mass hysteria eventually burns itself out. Just as the NFL is burning itself out by taking a knee and bars around the country are putting up signs, as we heard in the last hour, saying no NFL here, that too will burn itself out. And those uneducated, overpaid goons will soon learn who pays their tab. It's that simple. Have faith in America. Have faith in God. Because in the end, we will prevail. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Look, I know many of you liberals are salivating and say, aha, they finally got him. I hate Trump. He's going down. This lesson that you are going to learn from Mueller's overreach will be a lesson in the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment, which you liberals have so aptly tossed us by tossing cases of drug dealers who have been found with trunk loads of cocaine, only to have the case dismissed because the cops did not have a proper search warrant to open that trunk, even though they find 30 kilos of coke. Many cases have been thrown out on the illegal search and seizure business that liberal lawyers have uh, specialized in teaching us what the Fourth Amendment is. The Fourth Amendment protects Paul Manafort as well. And I've read pretty carefully from legal sources that Manafort's constitutional rights were over, were stepped upon by the aggressive campaign of Mueller. 
when they broke down Manafort's door at 5 in the morning, and you better pray it doesn't happen to you tomorrow, and you may scream, but I'm a liberal, but I'm a lawmaker, and I got to go to work. You're bothering me. I'm going to call. I got PTSD. Well, when they break your door down for stealing highway funds in San Francisco, for example, or for God knows what else you've been stealing in the cities around America, all of you good legislators you know, on the Democrat side, I can guarantee you, you will get a lawyer who will say that your Fourth Amendment rights have been violated if they violate the client attorney privilege and take papers related to you and your lawyer. But apparently Manafort's people, excuse me, Mueller's people took paperwork between himself and his lawyer that had nothing to do with this case, violating his Fourth Amendment rights. So pay close attention to this case. It will be a great lesson in the Fourth Amendment. Now, apparently, Maxine Waters never studied the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Here is a woman so evil in her head that she says, I want the facts to come out, but I want to encourage impeachment. This is something that occurs in a totalitarian dictatorship. How can you excuse her when you hear clip seven? Listen very carefully to it now. The fact that this president uh, has said that he wanted to lift sanctions, the fact that we passed law that said uh, strengthen those sanctions against Russia, and he has not implemented the law that we passed, he won't say a negative word about Putin. There's enough there for responsible, reasonable members of Congress to talk about impeachment. Why don't they impeach Maxine Waters for trying to encourage World, World War III? If you have a mad dog member of Congress who continuously wants war with a superpower based upon nothing, you then try to remove that person because she is a danger to all living things on the planet. Do you understand how crazy she is? She wants the facts to come out, but I want to encourage impeachment. When did you liberals become Nazis and fascists? Did it happen in the blink of an eye? Have you lost your sense?